This is uh, our latest uploads from uh, Rome, and uh, I'm going to talk about things which I never really wanted to talk about before. Uh, it's concerning, well, I'll get to it and you'll understand. However, as I said, we are in Italy near where Pope Benedict XVI uh, was held captive within his apartment in Castel Gandolfo. This is 20 kilometres from the Vatican. Our apartment overlooks the hills of Rome and uh, any helicopter traffic from Gondolfo to Rome flies directly overhead. The apartment is the top floor of a very large house. The ceilings are angled as if in a pyramid. The attic, in fact, but uh, it's not an addition. It is quite common to build houses in uh, this area with apartments built in the top floor for the oldies and uh, guests and so forth. Now, true to the divine plan, we are in a house owned by a lady who has uh, her two sons and their girlfriends living here. Uh, her older sister is 1.694 years younger than I, and the lady who owns the house, she is 537 weeks younger than I. The 537 is the distance into the king's chamber of the pyramid in inches. And I'm saying this because it's the synchronicity of it all, how it's all been preordained and preplanned. So really, uh, it's a foregone conclusion that um, we'll be taking over shortly. So into the uh, far wall of the king's chamber from the Grand Gallery Great Step, it's 537 pyramid inches, and the 1694 is Emmanuel in Greek, and means God with us. So in this house, it's saying God with us. This is the Emmanuel prophecy, Matthew 123, which has a geometry of 8880, and so it continues. And as you who are watching these videos over the years know that the 8880 was the age I was when I was in Fort Alberni, Canada. And my daughter Tracy Lee was born, and the sunrise to sunset was 888 minutes, and on it goes. Also, um, it's important she just had her um, 45th birthday on the 4th, and in the year 2000, all the planets out to uh, Saturn, um, my body weight of officially 222 pounds on all of these planets, and including the Sun, uh, is a total of the area of the Shroud of Turin in square inches, which in pounds was 7353. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And you see here on this uh, drawing side view, we've got the, the antechamber, which is 116.26, and then uh, we've got the distance to the centre of the king's chamber, 433, which is God Almighty. Um, then we have from the great step here, to uh, the far wall is 537 inches and that's the age difference between the owner of the house and myself in weeks. Now if you look at the top of the drawing you'll see that the very highest point of the Grand Gallery <coughs> is um, uh, the 60th layer and uh, for those of you familiar uh, it is 1114 um, pyramid inches uh, to the start of the uh, inner chambers. This is the floor of the Queen's Chamber or the bottom of the Grand Gallery. And the top of it is uh, 1114. So that is lunation 1114. And of course it's also my uh, 69th birthday, January 11th, 2013. Now being 1114 as Revelation, uh, we can then read Revelation from that point onwards, and this is what it all means, from 11.14 to 11.19, so it's Lunation 1114 through to 1119. I'll read them quickly. The second woe is passed, and behold, a third woe come quickly cometh quickly, and the seventh angel sounded, there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. 
Now we're going to Lunation 1116 at Revelation 1116. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God. And it goes to 17, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. So at this point in time, we're into the uh, uh, lunation 1117 coming up to 1118 in three days' time. And the nations were angry, and the wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And then it's going up to Revelation 19, 11, 19, so that'd be Lunation, 1, 1, 1, 9. And the pit temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in the temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So what's happening in space, of course, is the uh, approach of the planets from their 36,000 year orbit. Now the value of these verses are also a code in English gematria. The total is 8940. Now the 894 is Babylon. So call it days or uh, subtract from May the 10th, 2013. And the date is 1117-1988. Now 1988 was just when I was about to move to uh, Canada to start the battle back in Port Alberni. So the 11.17 is November the 17th, so in this case, 1117 is the lunation, 1117, Revelation 11.17. So that ends with May the 10th, 2013, which is the annual eclipse that's happening over Australia at longitude 116.26 east at latitude 25 degrees south. So we say saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. So at this point in time, today is May the 7th, 2013. We are still waiting to be arrested. This was the warning from Francis what would happen if we came to Rome. Now, it possibly isn't coming from Francis. Maybe it's coming from his thugs because they told us that he didn't give a shit and that they were the Antichrist. So that's the men who work for him. As for the whereabouts of Benedict or his staff, we were able to establish he was still in Castel Gondolfo, but impossible to see him by anyone. So in other words, he's locked up. There was no indication when Francis would move his captive Benedict from Gondolfo to the Vatican so we went to Rome on May the 2nd and presented ourselves to the Vatican gendarmes. They copied our passports and phoned the office of, we assume, the Pope and several people and spoke for a few minutes, but still no arrest. Very disappointing. However, at that time, uh, the helicopter was about to bring Benedict the 16th to the Vatican from Castel Gondolfo. That was 3.15, 3.16. PM, so we left for a coffee across the street. The helicopter landed at 4.30, which is God in Hebrew uh, numbers. So while we were in the Vatican talking to the guards, the helicopter was on its way. We were asked to return after 5 p.m. and again the gendarmes made calls. Finally a gent told us to wait in the office nearby. Then at 5.26, PM, a gent came down and said it was impossible to see anyone. We were about to leave, then a call came in and told him to give him our number, for us to give him our number, and we, he gave us their number to call, which we just did. Thus far, we have had no call from them. We tested the new phone and we cannot answer when it rings, and then we realised that it uh, had to be used in a certain way, which wasn't obvious, so... We eventually got it to work. But still, we didn't have a phone call. So on May the 10th, Australia time, the most profound annular solar eclipse will occur over Western Australia. The latitude for reading the prophetic messages of the solar eclipses, for those of you who have just uh, 
watch this for the first time, must be plotted as the moon overtakes the sun along either 25 degree north or south latitudes. Now, the uh, reason for the 25 is, first off, uh, the width of the Great Pyramid in its completed form with the capstone in place uh, means that the base is shrunk at the moment, but when the capstone is in place, it goes out to 9131.06 uh, pyramid inches and one inch equals a day, so that's 25 years. So it's also 25 reads and so forth. But there's many reasons why we have to go have a date and point for logic to uh, measure anything. So 25 degrees is what it's all about. So we got 25 degrees north or 25 degrees south, which is 50 degrees in total, and the king's chamber is on the 50 degree latitude, where the 111, rather 11626 wide uh, antechamber is. The moon cycle between the north and southern hemisphere crossing the 25 degree point is actually at quite a sharp angle, so we, we can uh, view that and get a very, very uh, pinpoint accuracy uh, to know exactly what the longitude is. This reveals time, distance to the Earth from the Sun and the Moon, the precise Earth surface. So that's what it looks like. And you see to the right uh, is Sydney where I was born. It's got their birth. And then you've got 25 degrees 116.26 eclipse. And as said, that is the width of the antechamber in the Great Pyramid on the 50th layer of masonry. And uh, of course, this uh, distance is 3490.1 kilometres. And uh, I'm showing it, it's moving along that line directly from uh, my birthplace. Now, that's what it looks with another astronomy program in space. So, we're looking from behind the Earth at the Moon and it's approaching the Sun. So, if we were to go down to Australia on the other side of the Earth, it would be totally lined up. To the left is Venus and Jupiter. Uh, this was the Star of Bethlehem, uh, June the 17th, 2 BC, when these two planets lined up. Jupiter is 88,800 miles across. And when my daughter was conceived on the 29th of July, 1967, Jupiter was overhead Port Alberni, Canada, for a period of 888 minutes. The distance to the Moon from the Earth is 400,919 kilometres. The number 919 is uh, the son of Jesus, or Bar Jesus, son of Jesus. And uh, when we, that is Ash and I, first committed to uh, join forces and do this to get the earth out of the prison that it's in, uh, under the yoke of the Jews, uh, we were at a place called Stamble Tops, and this is near Sydney. To get to it, you either go by the expressway or you go the old way down through the National Park, which closes that evening. So it was raining that particular night, and the uh, longitude where we were was the number four, Michael the Archangel, and um, the distance from that point where we was parked to another point, which I won't go into at the moment, was uh, 888 minutes, uh, meters. So. As we sat contemplating this, what we had to do, two vehicles come roaring out of the closed park and the license plate was 919. Now we hired a car a few days ago at the airport and uh, the license plate is uh, ER919BM, so there's my initials and the same number 919, son of Jesus. So this is how the how it all works. It's all preordained. I I can't change it if I wanted to. Now the position of the moon at 155.55 seconds. Now 1555 as a number in the concordance is Goliath, which indicates the Catholic Church. It's the largest church on earth. So the position of the moon at 155.55 when the eclipse will occur, Rome time, on the tenth of May, places the moon between the sun and the earth at a latitude and longitude of 529.400 by 103.19.800. The 103 is the address number 
of our house in Tugum, Australia. So I think of it as a laser coming from and through the centre of the sun, then the moon, and to the centre of the earth. This passes through the earth's surface at some point. So this is what we've done here. We've calculated that. We then measure from that laser point to where I was reborn. And that's what the drawing was previously, which I'll go back and show you, that one there. The distance in miles is 4143. So, we look this number up in the James Strong's Concordance at the King James Bible, which is based on the same general wording of the Catholic translation. So what we've done, we've taken from the Sydney address to where it's actually penetrating through the earth, that is the moon, the sun, on the earth's surface, and it is a distance, not the one shown here, that's the 3490 kilometres, that's not the one we're talking about. <coughs> we're talking 4143. Then we look this number up in the James Strong's Concordance, and uh, I should mention the King James Bible, which is based on the same general wording of the Catholic translation. The Catholics set the, the verses and which was in the Bible. The English translation being a world engineering language and Protestant domination of the Western English, which is dominated by the Jews, may appear to be superior to the Latin, but is not. It is a trap. So it is not a matter of superiority of matter, of a matter of the English measure. It's a matter of the English measure, which are based on the numbers of measures found within the altar to the Lord being a great pyramid, inches, feet, yards, miles, etc. And that was the original measurements used in Britain up until they discovered when I let it, know, let it be known what was going on. If you were to ask a rabbi, is Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall God or not? Yes or no? He is compelled to lie. That's the Talmud. <clears throat> so, he would say no, because he knows I am. If he said yes, he would be killed. So he has to say no. So ring up any rabbi you like and ask him. They will say no. Absolutely. We know that the Great Pyramid is the altar to the Lord, to myself that is, because the Talmud mindset dominates all of the world's communication system. <coughs> it is hell bent on diverting truth in all things. As the uh, religion known as Judaism is dominated by the Talmud, promoting documentaries that the hapless Egyptians built it for a tomb. So, whatever they're saying, just reverse it and you've got the answer. I have often said concerning Talmudic views, if their lips are moving, it's bullshit, as they are compelled to lie under penalty of their death oath. So, they're quite easy to flush out. Take the time to look up the Protocol of Zion, number 14, and it states, we will forbid Christ. Now, the protocols are a secret set of doctrines that they never thought would be discovered. They have a habit of, of uh, writing these things down because it's got to be taken over a long period of time because they're trying to make things happen their way. Now, the uh, doctrines <coughs> were, or the protocols were discovered on the body of a courier who was struck by lightning. So we can read the measure of the temple as per the book of Ezekiel, which is the earth, and Revelation. And as the earth is my temple, we can measure with global positioning satellite computer software and definitely pinpoint any location or a series of points. <coughs> Not Google Earth. I've exposed it three times in a row. They keep on changing it. It is intentionally wrong. Now for short distances, it's not bad. About two to three hundred kilometres. But you go long distances, it's out a long, long way. At one stage there, measuring from the uh, uh, Washington to the Great Pyramid, they had it at 5318 miles, and that is the height of the pyramid when it's completed. In actual fact, that was out by about 500 kilometres. In this case, we are measuring between the moon's surface location on the Earth on May the 10th, 2013, and where I was reborn. I'll show you that drawing in a minute. The distance is 4143 miles and is foundation. 
However, <coughs> in kilometres it's 6666. Why is that so? That's how many lords there are found in the Bible, King James, 1611 only. All others are changed. And this is the original. So it's 6,666 verses. Now, <coughs> foundation is found in Isaiah 28.16. Now you can read the number 28.16. It'll also confirm it. So, we're talking about a foundation stone, a precious cornerstone, pyramid, a sure foundation, pyramid, and that believeth shall not make haste. <coughs> So there is foundation. And of course I go to 3245 and on and on we go. And that's what it looks like. So we got that one there. We got that one there. So the 3490 to the eclipse from my birth. If you fight a laser beam through the Earth center, out through the surface, to the moon, to the center of the sun, that's the measurement we're talking about. Okay, so the distance to the moon is greater than a normal solar eclipse or total eclipse. Uh, the number 4009 is end, to end something. Greek Dictionary 4009 from the same as 4008, an extremity, an end. And as said before, the 919 is Bar Jesus. Now, because of the distance to the moon being greater than the 400,000 kilometres, uh, it shows up as a gold ring for those viewing it. I mean, but many people will go out in the desert of West Australia and be looking at that. And uh, it'll be up on the internet, of course and show you this golden ring. Now this is the ring that can be likened to the ring or the wedding or the engagement or wedding ring, uh, the wedding at Kana, uh, etc. So, Matthew 22, 8. Then saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highway, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highway, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, so inviting everybody. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, Francis. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment, and he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Lucifer in the flesh. So that's what we got. Distance 400919. So the distance in kilometres converted to miles to the moon, 249119 is 2491 is John, that's the book of Revelation. And uh, the earth radii is 62.9 earth radii. <coughs> that is a distance, what you do, you measure to the moon in the radii of the earth. 3963, which is Patmos in Greek. So you say, how many Patmoses are there to the moon at that point? So it's 62.9. So we've got John, we've got Patmos, earth radii, and the distance to the moon. That 62.9 is <coughs> Isaiah. The lunation is 1118. That's what I showed you before in the pyramid. Um, May 10th, 2013. The subtens angle is 4928 degrees, followed by June the 8th, 2013, and a final month ending on July the 8th, 2013. So it'll be all over by then. So we have uh, the sun distance and we have various other things you can read up there but you see where the lunation starts on May the 10th and ends on June the 8th. My sister's name is June.
The distance in kilometers converted to miles, as I said, is 2491 John, but in Hebrew it is pierced, especially to death. Figuratively, polluted, killed, profane, slain, man, slew, deadly wounded. The beast, the Vatican, is slain and deadly wounded. The lunation is 1118, May the 10th, 2013, being Revelation 1118. The sub tens angle is 0 0.4928 degrees, followed by June the 8th, lunation 1119 and so on. There's the uh, program uh, details. Now you see uh, on, I uh, want to point out the sub number here for uh, June. It's 4918 with 63.5 Earth radii. The sun distance Etc. and the radii of the moon and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. We go through to July the 8th, and that's lunation 11:20, and that is there's no 11:20 in Revelation, so I don't get it far. So we have 63:5. We read 63:1 through to 5 in Isaiah, and. Um, I have said to my followers many times that uh, William Shakespeare, who did the editing of the King James Bible after it was presented to him by a homosexual, and um, they're out of here, by the way. There's no homosexuality in paradise. Think of it as your home. Would you allow a child molester to come to your home and you've got little baby girls and boys running around? Well, same thing. Homosexuals are molesters, and they're gone. That's another form of abomination which I will not tolerate. Wherefore art thou, this is what William Shakespeare wrote in Romeo and Juliet, a love story. In it, two men are arguing. One blasphemes, but instead of saying Jesus, he says Jeshu Maria. Now the reason Jeshu Maria is because in the Essenes, and we're talking about the Carmel Essenes, not the Dead Sea Scroll Essenes, who were an abomination. They're Herodians who actually were responsible for the crucifixion. They joined forces with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. There were recent documents uh, uncovered by Anna, my grandmother, who is today back on the earth, and we spent a couple of weeks, and she's a lovely lady. We drove down from Germany with her. She's a brilliant mind, and uh, she uh, has discovered the uh, uh, account of uh, Pontius Pilate, who was doing his best not to crucify me. I think in a, in a sense, r very real sense, uh, he loved Jesus. He did, absolutely. So, um, he tried his best to stop it. And he studied Jesus for all the time that he was aware of Jesus, over three years. So, in this particular verse, we see the Lord is seen walking from Bosra. It's a modern Sodom. This is the world. He is wearing a pure white garment, the Holy Ghost. He is, however, covered in blood. So what you've got then is Romeo and Juliet points to Jeshua Maria, which is the Carmel Essenes, which is what I was then and am today. And um, he's coming from future now, today, covered in blood as the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost means that the virgin conception took place in with Mary. It also took place with Anna. This is Andrea, by the way. Uh, her name today. And um, Anna, she was a virgin conception in the Garden of Gethsemane, as was Mary. And um, I'm going to get into it a little bit in a moment something I've not wanted to do but I have to do it because truth is what it's all about ok so he is asked to what's happening and he says oh, I've crushed the people and my white garment Holy Ghost has been so it wasn't then it's only now of resurrection 
the garment of God that is worn on the outside. And it's pure white. It's a ghost. They were stained red by crushing the evil of the human beings of today and their blood is their soul and it sprinkles on the garment. And uh, Now I should also mention that my grandfather, Francis Galati, was 23229 days old when I was reborn, which is 63.59. So uh, you read Isaiah 63, 1 through to 9, a uh, 5, 9, which is 6 rounded. So I'll read it. Who is this that cometh from Edom and dyed garments with from Bosra, that is glorious in his apparel, travelling in the greatness of his strength? And then, you, then he answers, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Answer, I have trodden the wine press alone, but of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance now is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. He's talking to the Jews, right? And I will tread down the people in my anger, and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring them down, their strength down to the earth. So as the Jews are dominate the world, and they're getting crushed. So I had no help in actual fact for 64 years. And then Asherah Martha found me on March the 30th, 2008. I mention that date now because the same date five years later, Pope Benedict the 16th had planned to announce that he had met Salvador Mundi many the saviour of the world, myself. So, from conception to March the 30th, 2013, was 69.98 years, that's my age, Hebrew 69.98, is katuf, to cut down, pluck off, which is what Francis did when he stopped the announcement of my return by Benedict on RAI Public TV, which is the largest broadcasters in Italy with the Shroud of Turin showing. That was his parting gift. Francis literally plucked off the video recording Benedict made of my return and instead recorded his own pathetic introduction like a dog's vomit. Now the longitude of the eclipse uh, is 116.26. Uh, this is several things. Uh, it was founded by Peter, this is the Catholic Church. It's, it has been under attack from the devil since it began. Its atrocities were not my doing, but devil in man, nor was it the righteous people in the church. It has today 1.2 billion members worldwide, so that's it. It centred satanic power in the Vatican City and state, Lucifer on its walls beneath it. We've got all these abominations, there's 20 or 30 rooms or so, carved into the bedrock. <coughs> and it's got all this satanic shit in there. It began February the 11th, 1929 as the Vatican City and ended February the 11th, 2013, unknowing when Pope Benedict could no longer endure the filth within the church and he wasn't feeling well because he'd broke his wrist and he had arthritis and so etc. I spoke to him on the phone and cured him. Um, now, Mary, her virgin birth recognised only by the Catholic Church and uh, it the custodian of the Shroud of Turin. We went to the Shroud of Turin and couldn't get in. I, as Yahweh, was then the soul of the young man Jesus, known as the Son of God. This was the ghost that left my body as Jesus from the cross. The Shroud was my burial cloth. So, in the tomb, my soul... Well, first of all, let's say it easy. <coughs> Die on the cross, soul leaves. Bodies placed in a tomb in a shroud. Cloud, light above the... And this is reported and made known to uh, Pontius Pilate. There was a hundred centurions there watching the tomb. That's how desperate the Jews were to stop anything going on. And 
this huge 13 feet 2 inches by 2 feet deep that's uh, roughly 4 meters uh, was held in place by a 2 inch pin nailed into the wall and it was sheared off and flung back to where the cross and the crucifixion took place now this frightened the hell out of all of the uh, soldiers. In fact, the reports are that the ground was uh, swirling about and they could hardly stand up on it when this occurred. So the soul of myself re-entered through the shroud as it lay on my body. So the imprint of my body is on the outside of the shroud. So they've got to turn the thing over. They keep on looking at it as if it's been pressed against my skin. It wasn't. It's the other way around. That's why they've got the spear and the right and all this kind of thing backwards. So uh, it's a 69 year old image that is burned into it. It's an old man. And that's what I am today. That's why it's happening today. Now I won't go into the image and show you that. We can do that with another video and explain that properly. I've done it several times and in fact I get a bit bored with it. So I returned to the earth 1910 years later, after the resurrection, April 5th, June, uh, Jerusalem time, 33 AD. I uh, conceived within my mother Daphne Golightly, April 6th, 1943, via the Holy Ghost of Jesus, myself. She, like the conception of Mary and her mother Anna, both immaculate conceptions, my return was also without the male seed of Reginald Marshall. Now, how do I know this? Well, I am God, but he hated me from my birth, but there's a reason for it. Now, he was a handsome man. He never went to World War II as he drove a truck in what is called a protected industry, uh, a transport industry for vital exports from Australia to supply the Allies, which would be wool and meat and minerals and so forth, weapons. Uh, women were left without young men and so with the overpopulation of women they were getting a bit sexy and uh, my father being a handsome man as was his brother Jack they looked very similar my, uh, Uncle Jack was slightly taller than my father but they looked like twins now uh, my father and Jack took full advantage of their needs so this left their wives a little bit starved for love and uh, in particular with my mother, uh, his lustful ways were inherited, her inherited from his father, Alfred Marshall, who himself, at the age of 26 year old, seduced a child of 15, maybe less. She was pregnant by the time she was 15, so who knows when it all started. Now she was a Catholic and he was a Calathumpian Protestant. Now in those days, a mixed marriage was not racial, it was religious. Uh, at the age he was, and my grandmother, a child, the crime was carnal knowledge, a jailable offence. Now, she did something rather spectacular. She broke into a, uh, in Alexandria, uh, this is this, the suburb, Alexandria, near where I was born, and she stole the wedding uh, application form. She filled it all out. She then took down to the uh, Sydney Registrar of Births, Deaths and Marriages and then went over to see Alfred and said, right, you're married, son. So it was a bit of a surprise to him, but it kept him out of jail because he'd have been murdered, for sure. Now, in those days, a Protestant could not marry a Catholic without months of tuition by a priest. and mean you take a 14-year-old, 15-year-old girl who's pregnant, suddenly they're married, um, she'd have to do it with the permission with, uh, of the priest and with this and that and so forth and parents, witnesses. So she's filled it all out. I've got the actual document somewhere and it's all in her handwriting. Here's the priest and the, the uh, even old Alf, his signature is her handwriting. Now they married on this date, on the 18th of December, 1897. Now, 25 years later is when Lunation Zero is set. 
as you can see even then that uh, the women in the family were uh, victims. Now my brother, his sons, my sister and those descended from Alfred Marshall genetically all inherited the morals of Alfred. My brother and his two sons frequented brothels at every opportunity. Even today my nephew in, is uh, living in the Philippines and uh, living on drug money that he had uh, made over the years. Uh, even though he's married, he still goes off to brothels every chance he gets. And my brother had a brilliant mind. He was a genius at many things. Now he got this from Daphne Marshall, not my father, who was a moron. But up until his miserable death, I should say his father, he was a moron, original. Now, up until his miserable death, he spoke of nothing else than his exploits in brothels of Malaysia. He just loved to talk about it. I'd try and convert him because he's getting close to death, but wake up. No, nah, all he wanted to do was talk about brothels. Now, these genetic traits were confirmed to me, as I said, by my brother, who had discovered the wedding certificate of his father, Reginald, and Daphne. You'll understand why I'm saying his father in a moment, not my father. Now, on that certificate had the date, July the 20th, 1934, which my mother apparently scratched out and changed to January the 20th. It looks pathetic. Uh, you can see it's all been scratched out and she's changed it to January. This made my brother illegitimate again, but a very serious moral issue for a woman to be pregnant out of wedlock in those days. My brother had a joke. He would say that he was with mum inside her womb when he was 60 days old when they got married on May the 21st, 1934. So she changed the date to make it legal. However, I heard aunties, and as, as women do, bitching and carrying on and having a go at my mother for being married uh, while she was pregnant. So in other words, she was knocked up before uh, holy matrimony. Now, my brother had told me there had been a breakup between Daphne and Reginald, as he, a man who frequented the Chinese opium dens in Sydney, had as many women as he could handle, basically quite exhausted by the time he got home, was given an ultimatum by Daphne that he had better smarten up. So there was a breakup. Now, during that breakup period, uh, I was conceived. Now, she was a moral woman. She didn't go, and even if she could uh, or wanted to, uh, there was a lot of competition, all these women out there. And my mother wasn't particularly pretty, so uh, she wouldn't get a lot of uh, attention. Later, when I was an adult, she commented, commented to me that I was supposed to have been born in November on the 11th, 1943. So there's your 1111 date. According to her doctor, calculating from the date of her intercourse prior to the breakup and separation between herself and Reginald. But I did not conform to the predicted date and was conceived by the Holy Ghost on April 6, 1943, and therefore could not have been from the last sexual contact two months earlier and as they were broken up. Therefore, when born in January the 11th, 1944, he, albeit a stupid man, he was aware nine months earlier could not have been his seed. So I was not his son. So it confirmed in his mind that he could not have been the father, thinking instead the father was Jack, his older brother. That's why I looked like my father in his mind, but I also looked like Uncle Jack. Now how can that be? A child can look like a man who was not his father, yet with the same mother. It's all to do with the wall of the womb. It retains a memory of the first pregnancy. In, the case, in this case, my mother's womb was imprinted with her first child, Ronald, the abomination. Now, I look somewhat like Ronald. Then her second child, June, resembles the first, and she looks very much like Ronald. 
Then when I am conceived within the same womb, but not of the father of Ronald, or June, but was of the Holy Ghost. This is why I inherited only the looks of my father, and as he looked like his brother Jack, because of the memory held by the womb, the first pregnancy, <coughs> he thought it was Jack. In fact, my mother Daphne was warned not to have another child after her second pregnancy, June, was born. She had a kidney problem, which had confi confined her in hospital for 13 weeks after she gave birth August the 18th, 1938. Now, my father always referred to me as the mistake. Not his mistake, my mother's mistake. And she had a funny look on her face when he'd say it. This also made the sexual activity dramatically lessened between her and her husband, Reggie. Uh, and she said to me, oh, ten years ago or so, that Reggie never pestered her for about sex. This is something that's quite surprised me by my mother. They never talked about that sort of thing. But she said it to me. He never, Reggie never pestered me about sex, she said. No wonder he was with more women than he could handle. And, of course, because she had a kidney problem and uh, didn't want to have many more children, it was a perfect excuse for him to climb the fence. My mother was like me. She remembered minute details of time and in particular when she had intercourse, fearing pregnancy, no birth control in those days, using the rhythm method for the Catholic Church. There's no way in the world that she wanted to get pregnant. So she knew exactly when. So for, the reason, for that reason, the math tells us that from the conception date in her mind, my gestation was for a period of 11 months, not 9 months, or 340 days an impossibility and therefore we have the cause of my father's hate for me for all of my life. Now I'd like to mention my mother said she had 55.5 hours of gestation as I said she thinks like me which is Christ number of times it's found in the, in the King James Bible and because she never read the Bible she knew know nothing about the Bible. You mean labour? She was in labour for 50, what did I say? Gestation. Oh, sorry. Labour for 55.5 hours. Born at 2.22 in the morning. And that's the kind of woman she was. Details. Now, the Hebrew dictionary for 340 is the word ayah. A primitive root to hate as one of an opposite tribe or party. Hence, to be hostile, be an enemy. So this is what my father thought about me, that number confirms it. He hated me. Now, he never picked me up as a baby, never hugged me, never took me anywhere like he did his brother and sister, and he never told me he loved me, nor did he ever sit, I ever sit on his lap. At every opportunity, he would torment me verbally and physically abuse me daily. My mother would attempt to protect me during his rages, Reggie, don't punch him on the back of the head. So he would punch me. And he was a man who worked around the walls and he was a tough old geezer. And uh, he laid into me every chance he got. Now 340 days is 0 0.930888 years. So here we have the message. In the Greek it means from 9 to 8 a torturer, a tormentor. And that's what he did daily. If I had a dog, for example, he would take the dog and put it into the uh, what's called the RSPCA and they would gas the dogs. And he used to have a joke. He'd be driving his truck past the RSPCA and this guy called uh, Frank Cusack would sing out, Any dogs today, Reds? And he'd, he'd tell that joke to the, to the uh, other people in the house or my relatives and so forth, all the time. Repeated it over and over, a thousand times I've heard it. Any dog today, Reg? Now the 888, of course, is uh, Jesus in quick. So you put the two together, what do you got? This father, that's allegedly father of mine, was my torturer, a tormentor of Jesus. I often thought, when I heard about the Jews dying in the gas chambers, I thought, oh dear, I could relate to that with the, the only love of my life of my dogs taken to the gas chamber and gassed. You drive past, you hear them yelping when they put them in the gas chamber. 
As it turns out, the Jews didn't die in the gas chamber at all. That was all bullshit from the Jews too. You can find out about that by looking up David Irving's books and read about it. And he's a man that investigated it all thoroughly and they've got scientists going into the concentration camps and there's no such thing that happened. In fact, people who died in the concentration camps, when the English, which I've got a friend of mine, went there, uh, went into the concentration camp and they were dying of typhus and starvation. So if you was going to kill people, and we're talking 7 million that the claim is, there was only 3 million people in Europe that were Jewish, and uh, when you put them into a concentration camp, you'd walk them straight through, shoot them in the head and bury them, right? But no, often people talk about who were Jewish, talk about their parents and so forth, being in the concentration camps, and it was a good place to be in the first few years, putting on uh, stage shows for the kiddies and, and so forth. So it's a total bullshit about Hitler. Now, Reginald actually thought my mother definitely had turned to my Uncle Jack. He looked like him, as I said. He was taller and very quick-minded. So men who are lustful cannot comprehend their wives, can be pure morally, because they think, what would they do in her situation? They can only think in their immoral ways. And so he was convinced Jack must have been my father. Therefore, Reginald was not my father at all at conception. And of course it was like Jesus. As God in the flesh, I cannot come down through any other means but via a woman that conceives via the Holy Ghost. Now the same spirit conceived within Mary and her mother Anna. Now there's lots of things written about this and it's accurate, which is suppressed by the Jews. So like her, Daphne gave birth via the Holy Ghost. Now, I want to make that clear because this gets into something even deeper than that. We've got Luke one thirty five, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, Michelle, who was my third wife, this is important. She said to me, well, I'll read it. Michelle Nye, my third wife, who was Mary Magdalene, that's absolutely 100%, told me she was not having intercourse with her husband when she conceived her daughter, Rihanna. She said his sperm must have swam across the water in her bath. Now, Michelle is a dim-witted woman, interested only in her own pleasures, yet a vessel of genetics passed on to her youngest daughter. So I won't go into the genetic side of it. But through her, it goes to go back to the marshals in uh, uh, Europe. Uh, same name, if you like. Rhiannon, when pregnant, had intim intimated that I should not know when her baby would be born. I answered and told her I did. I read it again. Rhiannon, when pregnant, had intimated that I should know when her baby would be born. I answered and told her yes, August 11th, 2001, at 8.53pm. Now, according to her doctor, the baby was not due until September. So we another, have another strange conception here. On the predicted date, she and Jade, that's the husband at the time, came to our home and she said it was the 11th and there was no sign of the baby coming. I said the day is not over yet. As they left, I headed back to the farm where they lived in a small cottage, then her water broke. Then later, holding the baby in her arms, Jade said, oh shit, he was right. The baby is the reincarnate of my mother, Daphne. I have to get her back. We do the numbers on that, it was 8.8. 8, she would have been 88.8 .8 years old, but she was dead by then. As time went by, she, Alaska, a toddler, one day walked into where I was working on my computer, and out of the blue said, I was your mother. Now, this also happened with the next baby, uh, which is the younger sister, Trinity Lee. Now, Rhiannon, pregnant the second time, again asked me if I would tell her the date of the baby would be born. I said, no, I wouldn't do it. I told you when Alaska would be born, and still you scoff. She said, you don't know it. Was a lucky guess and went on and on and on. 
I know we're right, but I won't tell you. That's what I told her. She may even confirm it one day. Who knows? The second baby was reborn on February the 21st, 2004. This is Trinity. This date was 888 weeks after I married my second wife. Uh, that was uh, married in 1987, February the 14th. She was 8.8888 years old on my 69th birthday. In addition, back in time, 88,888 days was the entry into the ship's log of the SS Endeavour as Lieutenant Cook had recorded the sightings of the Messier Comet sailing back from Antarctica on August 30th, 1769. It was 22 days after it was discovered by Messier. Now what happens <coughs> as the uh, solar system is moving northward at 69,000 kilometres per hour, when a uh, comet is sighted, it will dip down below the sun and then come up under the earth and therefore be sighted after it was first discovered by Messier in the northern hemisphere and then trailing behind it 22 days later it ended up in the South Pacific. This is where Cook sighted it. But if you take the 88888 number add it to the first sighting of Messier on the 8th of the 8th in uh, 19, uh, 1769 it is Rhiannon's birthday. So we've got a lot going for it here. So Rhiannon's birthday, uh, 20th of uh, December in 2012. Who then is the new baby girl born of such a series of coincidental dates connected to the Jesus number 888? She is Mary, my mother, who conceived of the Holy Ghost. On September the 11th, 3 BC, and that is why they brought the Twin Towers down on that day. This is the devil. So it doesn't matter whether the Jews or the Americans or whoever does it, the devil's behind it. And they will do things unknowingly. There's another slap in the face to get Jesus and kill how many thousands of people? They said it was less than 3,000. The reason they said it was less than 3,000 people and killed in Twin Towers is because if it's more than 3,000, you can't rebuild. It then becomes a sacred shrine, American law. So, probably more like 20,000 people died. There's 80,000 people, tourists in it every day, let alone the staff. And two towers went down. Plus the, the mystery of the third tower that goes down. We see then that the solar annual eclipse of May the 10th, 2013, reveals me as a fatherless child by measuring from 25 south, 116. 0.26 east to my rebirth location, 105 Rothschild Avenue, Rosebury, Sydney. It's in Lamentations 5.3. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. Orphans is the word. 3490. And I'll go back and show you that in a moment. From an unused root meaning to be lonely, to be a bereaved person, fatherless child, an orphan. There it is, 3490. The 2736, uh, I'll just see if I can find that. No, it's not on this computer, it's alright. Not on the computer. I won't even go into it, it's a long story, but um, it's similar. So now we have the distance from the eclipse to my rebirth and is a lonely, fatherless child. So in the king's chamber, we've got the width of the antechamber, which is the same number. 116.26 east is 116.24 pyramid inches. If you multiply that by pi, it's 36524.24, which is a solar year. And if you're looking at the screen here, if you just split the moon in half, it fits on either side of the king's coffer up against the walls of the uh, king's chamber. So out of this genetic immorality of the martial contribution to my existence, there is no way I share any of the traits, and even on his deathbed, my brother, my father, wanted to, I shouldn't say my father, Reginald, wanted to disinherit me from his will. A third shear in a house located at 7 Trevone Street, Padstow, Sydney, Australia, and if you go to 7 Trevone in Padstow, 
in Cornwall, the distance is 10772.6, which is the number of the feet diagonal, 1177.26 feet diagonal, the fully uh, finished uh, Great Pyramid diagonal. It's also the distance in time between the beheading of Charles I, who died for me, in days, 117726 days. My sister-in-law Joan, who had endured the adultery of my brother for decades, told me she had persuaded him, that's Reginald, not to disinherit me, as my mother, Daphne, would not have sanctioned it. So here he was, the old bastard, on his deathbed. Now the measly sum inherited, a lot of it was ripped off by uh, an arsehole in uh, New Guinea. However, uh, Ash, Martha, and I took the new the money to New Guinea and established two AIDS, cancer, malaria, VD, TB, diabetes, two, etc. centres. We purchased a vehicle for the use as an ambulance for those who uh, were bedridden out in the outer regions of Port Moresby, in the villages and so forth. Uh, so they could be transported to the uh, main uh, clinic to be cured. And usually it took about a half hour to cure them of all diseases. We, of course, were threatened with death and by the government jailed if we returned. Later we did the same in Fiji and supplied a four-wheel drive Toyota uh, for our clinic and uh, put a new motor in it. And this was also... This is on the island of Sabu Sabu, and uh, to reach remote areas for the uh, people to be taken in and treated. Uh, the Fijian authorities arrested us twice, and we were later deported. Now, I had learned who I was as a youngster of six and a half years. Actually, I was two, four, two, four days. It was the 31st of August in uh, 1950. Mary appeared to me, telling me, we were Essenes, and if the Jews found out, they would kill us. Now, I should say, when I was taken back, um, two boys were arguing. One said Jesus was an Essene, was a uh, Pharisee. The other one said he was a Sadducee. And I was rushing up to punch their lights out. And as I pushed through between them, I stepped back in time and had no recollection, recollection of being where I'd just come from, sitting on the steps of a synagogue. And uh, Joseph was inside the synagogue and we were coming back from uh, uh, Egypt and uh, the place was Carmel and later become Nazareth I believe and she called out to me as she was walking down the street and as I rushed up to her she said Jesus, Jesus and I come down and she said Jesus I've got something to tell you if the Jews find out we are Essenes they will kill us As I said, I had no memory of just stepping in time through uh, from the playground in the convent in Botany Road, Botany, in Australia on that day. Now, my Catholic upbringing revealed the filth in the priesthood and convinced me I would eventually confront the devil and man in the church. And finally, my son, Benedict the Sixteenth, would stand up in total innocence and announce me. He's such a pure man, he... I couldn't convince him that Francis is of the devil or anyone else for that matter. Even Pope John Paul II, who was an absolute monster, he thought he was a lovely man. I thought he wouldn't let him clean up the, uh, the child molestation and so forth, which Benedict tried to do. He stopped it. So it all began with evil genetically. December the 18th, 1897, a marriage date of my mother's, uh, my uh, original parents, and I say mother's husband, and for me, it was a matter of waiting it out. So once I had the tools, I could unravel it all. Therefore, it's now history, all laid out on the web. And so in these last few days, I reluctantly must reveal it all to you. I never want to talk about it. My alleged father, the, 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 the trolls are going to go nuts over this. And I mean, they're all dead meat, so let them go for it. Let her out of here. My alleged father, Reginald, was a period of 4073 days to his birth from the 12th of the 18th, from the marriage of the 12th of the 18th, 1897. I'll point out in 1922 that's when Lunation Zero was set by the astronomers, presumably in England. The marriage date of his parents, as I said, was December the 18th, 
1897, 25 years before the actual change of the lunation numbers to lunation zero. However, Greek Dictionary, 4073, Petra, the same as 4074, Rock, Petros, apparently the primary word, a piece of rock. Larger than a 3037, I've got to look it up, as a name, Petrus and Apostle, Peter, Rock. That's what I renamed Benedict. Matthew 16, 18, which is a Fibonacci number, 1618. And I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now you notice that it's the 1.618 is a Fibonacci number which is life. So the life from that point onwards will be dominated by Peter, who I have renamed Peter the Second or Petros Romanus, as per the Malachi prophecy. Okay, um, we go on from there. So this brings us back to Revelation 17.11. Seven men has held the position of king and pontiff of the Vatican city-state. The former that formed in 1929 on February the 11th. Now, 84 years later, uh, Pope Benedict retired or announced his retirement. He can't retire, but he can stop being king. That's different. You can abdicate and you can uh, come away from being a king, but you can't come away from being a pope. So what's happened? Was he's no longer king of the Vatican? Why? Once it happened, the Vatican without a king means it's dead. It's the beast that's dead. So I told Benedict, no, he is still Pope and was not King, as the Vatican is no more. It ended according to the Malachi prophecy of 111 Pontus of the Church. So what's, what that means is the only one that's left alive out of the seven men that were in the position of King and Pontiff, he resigns as King, can't resign as Pope because it's the life. It's like me saying to you, your name is, is Fred, and uh, you want to change your name. Well, you're still bloody Fred far as your mother concerned, up until you die. So there were seven kings, one of the seven became the eighth, or will become the eighth. So this is the eighth pope and can only be the pope still alive, that is Benedict. As I said, I renamed him Petrus Romanus, predicted by Malachi. Now he comes out and he announces, once he's found me, that um, he was going to, and did this before, by the way, he knew of me, uh, the Shredder to in the last showing, because he knows the Shredder to is a wonderful thing, and it does have the, the imprint of God on it. And so, as he had already announced it, he then decided that he would put in a video announcing me as being the saviour of the world, Salvador Mundi, and be announced by the TV station. So... Francis the Antichrist was elected after March the 12th, so therefore illegal, can't be done. They already knew that I was here, and we told them all. So in the fastest election ever, Francis became Pope on March the 13th. A farce, as a former Pope, according to the Church, had announced he believed I was the Christ. This should have stopped the conclave, because logically they're all supposed to be wonderful men, which they aren't, and uh, they would all seek the second coming of Jesus. So they know all the stuff I've told you. So uh, they should have come to Benedict and asked him. Now he was, and still is, one of the smartest men in uh, religious teachings in Europe. And he was a professor at uh, Regensburg University in Germany. So he's no, he's no slouch. Now Francis, of course, is an idiot. I don't think he's even opened the Bible. So he had no idea what this is all about, but a man like Benedict, being a German in particular, they're very sharp people. So the date, February the 11th in Rome, is the same as my father's birth date in Sydney, the 12th, because Australia's ahead. So he was 104 years old. And the beast that was and is not, even is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. The beast is the Vatican, it is dead. No more king. And only one man, he the former king, but still pope, is Benedict the Sixteenth. 
the annual eclipse May the tenth, two thousand thirteen, at longitude one 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 sorry one one six point two six, is the width of the antechamber within the passage leading from the king's chamber, one one six point two six pyramid inches wide, which I mentioned before, was the age I married Lucifer in the flesh, Arlene Joyce Rosewarn. I was one one six two point six weeks. I married her in 1966 on April the 23rd. 1966 in Hebrew is Lucifer. My daughter Tracy Lee just passed her 45th birth date, May the 4th, 2013. She is 11.626 years older than my stepdaughter Rhiannon. December the 20th, 1979. Go back 88888 eight, 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 eight days and you've got a messier comment. Her mother, formerly Mary Magdalene, is 1162.6 days younger than I. She was born on March 19, 1947, and my youngest daughter, 777 days older than Rihanna. This is 2.127 years, all linked together in First Chronicles 5.13. I won't go into it in detail, but uh, it reveals the uh, average of being 4443.714 and um, this is how many times the word God is found in 3877 verses and where I was born into St. Uh, Margaret's maternity in Darlinghurst the distance to the South Pole is 3877 miles so the distance between two homes I built in Canada is 444.3 kilometers which is where the two girls were conceived and born Okay, and on and on it goes. So I won't go into it because it's just too complex. However, you can study it individually in other videos or ask questions and we'll do another video. So i got Matthew 12.31. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And that means all these trolls have been having a go at me over these years. They're dead meat. I would not, not only have them in my house, I wouldn't have them on the planet. Holy Ghost is the soul of Jesus back as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now there it is from an astronomy's point of view uh, on that date. And I'll show you why I mentioned the 2127. We've got the sun distance is 1.01 .01 astronomical units. Mercury 1.33. Venus 1.68, that's the star of Bethlehem, the 168th day of the year, June the 17th, 2 BC. Mars is 2.46, Jupiter is 5.96, Saturn is 8.83, and the total is 2127. Zia. Uranus is 20.82, Neptune 30.24, Pluto 31.80 for a total of 8286. Add to the 2127 to give you 10413. So we see the inner planets measured from the Earth out to Saturn measures the 2127 number, which is a zero in First Chronicles 5.13. Now I've got some several other miracles which I can throw in here which I won't at this moment. It uh, is referring to an old Bible of 1698 I bought in America. Uh, it has a baby boy born in that. He lived for 777 days, and his name is Gardner, James Gardner. And I was conceived on Gardner's Road. My cousin's name was Gardner. Revelation 22:19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part in the book of life and of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. And so a holy number, as it is the age different between the dates of Rhiannon was born and my younger daughter Nicole is 777 and that's how many times the word city ending on that particular verse, Revelation 22.19. You can also read the concordance numbers for 22.19 and do the geometry in English of the entire verse and Greek and Latin and on it goes. So, it is the age, Michelle, Mary Magdalene, gave birth to Rhiannon, December the 20th, 1979, and 777 days earlier, 2127 years, my youngest was born in Canada, as well as my 
Oldest daughter will be, or was rather, 11.626, same number as the antechamber and the longitude of the eclipse. Back in time to my eldest, Tracy Lee, May 4th, 1968, in Port Alberni, Canada, when I was 8,880 days old and the sunrise and sunset was 888 minutes, and you go back gestation period to June to July 29th, and Jupiter, which is 88,800 miles across, was above Port Alberni for 888 minutes. The age Michelle was, when she gave birth, was 32.75, which Jack Khan's only found once in the 800,000 words of the Bible. Zia is only found once 800,000 times in the Bible. And they are side by side in First Chronicles 5.13. And when you add all those numbers up and uh, divide it by 7, but first off you get 31101 when you go into the Great Pyramid, which is the same number of the Julian date I was born on, 2431101. But getting back to First Chronicles 5.13, it's uh, 31106 divided by the 7 gives you 4443.714 and that's Isaiah 714. There's a drawing of it there. And remember, if you look at the bottom there, 537 inches, that's the age difference between the lady who owns this house that we're sitting in at the moment in a pyramid-shaped attic looking overlooking the seven hills of Rome <laughs> waiting for a phone call from the fucking Pope Right for a visit and hoping they'll come and arrest me. So we got First Chronicles 5.13 and their brethren of the house of the, their father were Michael, I'll give you the numbers here, 7317 and Meshulam 4918, which I must mention was a longer latitude of the uh, small trailer I was living in before I flew back to Australia, which is also in kilometres 31101 with a 1 in front of it, something like Jacan, so we got uh, Michelin, Marshall, 4918, Sheba, 7652, that was the name of my cat, and my cat today, or our cat today. Jirai, 3140, and Jacan, this is Michelle, 3275, and Zia, 2127, difference in age between the two children, and Heba, 5677. Therefore, I have been constrained by time, restrained uh, by location and the arising of one man who is now under house arrest the most learned man in Europe Pope Benedict who had announced slam dunk sorry Lucifer you lose the return of Jesus all that stands in the way of world peace is Francis who arrested the pontifical household because they all believed in me and the words of Peter II Salvador Mundi, Brian Leonard, the Lightly Marshal. And that ends this particular upload.